Hello, this is a book called The Secrets to Deliverance, Defeat the, the Toughest Cases of Demonic Bondage by Alexander Pagani. Um, for the, uh, out of respect for, um, for this, for this man of God, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I am going to read the acknowledgments. Um, it's, it's not too long, so this will be the first video that I'm doing on this book. Um, again, titled The Secrets to Deliverance, The Secrets to Deliverance by Alexander Pagani. <laughs> um, so I'll go ahead and get started. So he, he begins to say, um, to the Holy Spirit, thank you for granting me wisdom and insight into the mysteries of the kingdom and entrusting me with the secrets to deliverance to continue your work of setting the captive free. To my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thank you for choosing me and entrusting me with this ministry. To my Heavenly Father, I'm eternally grateful to you for giving my life purpose and meaning. You're worthy to receive all glory, honor, majesty, and power. To my loving wife and best friend, Il, Il Belize Pagani, um, thank you. Uh, if uh, thank you for believing in me for my from day one. I'm still desperately in love with you after all the after all these years. You're the most amazing woman I've ever met. Words can't express how grateful I am for the countless times you saved our ministry with your ability to hear God in your dreams. You're my personal prophet, and I love you with all my heart. To my sons, Apollos and Xavier, I love you both. Thank you for completely understanding God's call on my life and sharing me with the world, sharing me with the world without resentment. To see you both loving God and growing up into men who love God with all your hearts is what I live for. Dad is so proud of you both. To my parents, Nancy and Alexander Pagani, my grandmother, Emilia Rivera, my aunts, Vilma Batista and Marilyn Rivera, and all my cousins and immediate family who have been there for me my whole life. Thank you for your love, loving support throughout the years, especially during the darkest moments of my life. I love and appreciate every one of you. I'm blessed to be part of our family. And to my in-laws, Bienvenido and Sarah Montes, I love you and thank you you for all your support to the greatest church he is risen tabernacle where would i be without you words can't express how much i love you all or love all of you we've been on an amazing journey together all these years and we're leaving a legacy for future generations i'm honored to be called your pastor and to lead such an amazing church finally this book is dedicated to all the deliverance ministers who pioneered a path for future generations to follow. Wynne Worley, Derek Prince, John Eckhart, Frank Hammond, Ivory Hopkins, Dan Don Basham, Neil T. Anderson, H. A. Maxwell White, Kimberly Daniels, Anna Mendez Farrell, Guillermo Maldonado, Maldonado as well as all the Catholic exorcists and every other deliverance minister who remains unnamed and hidden behind the scenes, setting the captive free at no charge. I honor you all, and I am humbled to be counted among you. Okay, so that was the, um, what was that, the acknowledgments, and then I'm going to go ahead and just read the introduction, and then um, cut the video, and then I'll start chapter, chapter one, I believe is what it follows. So, Without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started with the introduction. So, um, so we all know that uh, Alex is his name, Alex Pagani, um, and his the introduction. He's he he writes, Alex, what are you doing? Um, so so what, what's happening here is he's putting us in a situation where he, he sh he's painting a picture for us, uh, something that happened to him, and um, without without. Um, Explaining the way I see it, we'll go ahead and uh, listen to what he has to say about his own story. So he says, Alex, what are you doing? You're embarrassing yourself in front of the core leadership. 
That's what I was thinking as I felt myself being pinned to the floor by an unseen supernatural force. I was a pastor who'd helped dozens of people get free of demonic oppression. Listen to how he said, I want to, uh, how he says, I was a pastor who'd helped dozens of people get free of demonic oppression. But he still heard, he still heard, what are you doing? You're embarrassing yourself in front of the core leadership. Um, but a church business meeting took an unusual turn. Um, so he says, I was a pastor who'd helped dozens of people get free of demonic oppression. But a church business meeting took an unusual turn. And I found myself on the floor with what felt like a giant foot on my back and my ministry team taking authority over a demon that was manifesting. As I wondered how in the world I'd end up in a church, up in church, sorry, as I wondered how in the world I'd ended up in such an embarrassing position, I heard a voice whisper in my, my ear, I've been sent to remove this demon. I'm allowing it to manifest so I can remove it. Those words from the angel with its foot on my back helped me later. But at the time, knowing God was allowing the situation didn't make it any easier to swallow. Because I couldn't control what was happening to me, rage and embarrassment filled every part of me. I squirmed on the floor, wanting to throw something, something but unable to really move because of that huge unseen foot on my back. Then suddenly, a loud shriek came out of my mouth, and I heard my core ministry staff begin to take authority over the demon. Thankfully, that was the beginning of the end. Prior to the demonic manifestation, we were having a staff meeting, and some minor disagreements quickly escalated into an argument. I was angry over something that I knew was insignificant, but I couldn't control myself. I'd felt that anger before. And to be completely honest, I was tired of fighting it. So I took my glasses off and said, I really need to get free from this. That is the last thing I remember before I woke up on the floor with the angel's foot on my back, wondering why I was embarrassing myself. I spent about five minutes on the floor before I let out that loud shriek which lasted for at least 30 seconds. And then the demon left. Immediately I heard the voice in my ear again. This time saying, the demon of destruction is gone. Don't look for it. An overwhelming peace swept over me. And I noticed that my chest felt different. Even after I accepted Christ, I carried myself with a kind of bravado that I learned growing up in the Bronx. It wasn't just a, a way I walked or talked. I, I literally felt something in my chest. But now it was gone. And everything who knew me, or everyone who knew me, could tell the difference. I got saved in prison and learned deliverance because I and people I ministered to were dealing with issues that counseling and inner healing couldn't seem to solve. Through the years, God had been showing through the years God had been showing me step by step how to help people get free but my experience at our church that day convinced me that there was even more to deliverance than I realized Christians could not only need deliverance but demons could lodge themselves in hidden areas of our lives both in our souls and in our body parts I knew the demon that caused me to feel such rage was literally residing in my chest because after I was set free, I felt a physical difference. I realized that if a demon could live in a body part, that I needed to look further into where else an unclean spirit might hide so that as a deliverance minister, I could be more targeted and specific in my prayers. I began seeking God for answers and a couple months later I had a dream. In it I was approached by a well-known ministry leader who told me to open my hand. When I did this, this person gave me a little book with the title, The Secrets to Deliverance. 
shining in gold letters. The minister then closed my hand and I woke up. From that day until now, my spirit has been receiving download after download of insight into the realm of the human soul and the demonic. Shortly after that dream, God began showing me why it can take so long for some people to get free, myself included. God revealed that the human soul can be shattered in pieces as Psalms chapter 7 verse 2 says, lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to, de to deliver. Demons hide in these fragmented pieces in the human soul until someone cleans up the mess and picks up the pieces. Each of these pieces represents a part of you or a fragment of your personality. When I first received this revelation, I called these pieces fragments. But as time progressed, I began seeing this revelation throughout scripture. And I realized, and I realized these fragments as quote unquote rooms in the soul. I began to teach the revelation God was giving me during our midweek Bible study and there was an incredible response each time. The most hardened members of our church were being instantly set free as we began going into the rooms of their souls and removing the most hidden demons. This book shares my experience along with proven biblical strategies for evicting demons, hiding in body parts, and cleaning out the rooms of the soul to bring people into deeper levels of deliverance. If you've ever prayed for someone and just couldn't seem to break through, or if you sought deliverance for yourself again and again and nothing seems to change, this revelation is for you. God wants to upgrade your understanding of deliverance so you can finally experience breakthrough.